The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Homeowners, attention please. Have you heard about the assured home ownership plan offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society? If not, be sure to listen carefully to the middle commercial. Find out why this Equitable Society plan is both a money saver and a home saver. Find out why the Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. Tonight's FBI file, The Reluctant Thief. Every study made into the field of crime by your FBI in recent years has shown that juvenile delinquency is the number one problem facing law enforcement agencies all over the nation. The most recent study covering all crimes committed in the past year is no exception. Year by year, America is producing more and more junior criminals. Youngsters who will, unless headed off, keep the crime wave mounting. For example, and this is only one of the frightening statistics produced by the study, the number of youngsters arrested in 1946 between the ages of 18 and 20 was 24% higher than in 1945. That is a jump of almost one quarter. And as if to prove the inevitable consequences of the juvenile delinquents who grew up through the war years, Arrests in the age bracket of 21 to 24 rose more than 64%. The time to do something about the juvenile delinquency problem is now, for tomorrow may be too late. Tonight's FBI file opens in a modest frame house located in the suburbs of a small eastern city. A stout, middle-aged woman is tidying up the living room of this dwelling. As the front doorbell rings, the woman hurries to the door and opens it. Hiya, Mom. Eddie. Yeah. Oh, son, it's so good to see you. <laughs> oh, goodness, let's not stand out here. Come in, son, come in. Okay, Mom, sure. Oh, now let me have a good look at you. Look okay? Wonderful. One thing I can say for the school, they sure fed me good. They must have. Goodness, how you've grown. Well, it's been almost a year, Mom. That's right, it has. Hey, where's Joey? Oh, he's out, out playing. Well, didn't he know I'd be home this afternoon? Well, uh, yes, he did. Well, what's the matter? Didn't you want to see his own brother? Uh, son, Joey is... Uh, well, I've been having quite a bit of trouble with him lately. What about? He just refuses to pay any attention to what I tell him. Oh, wise guy stuff, huh? Not really. After all, he's only 15. Well, that's old enough to know better, Ma. He'll learn, Eddie. Right now, he just doesn't seem to understand. Well, look, will you let me have a talk with him? Oh, I wish you would. Oh, heaven, son, you must be starved. Now, you go inside and get washed, and I'll set out your dinner. Wait, Mom, why don't you let me... Is that you, Joey? Yeah, Mom. Well, come on in here, Eddie's home. Oh. Hiya, Joey. Hello, Eddie. Well, Joey, aren't you going to say you're glad to see him? Glad to see you, Eddie. That's better. Joey, where are you going? In my room. Wait a minute. Huh? I want to talk to you. Well... Joey, Mom says you've been giving her trouble while I was away. How? Not minding it. That ain't so. Look, kid, Mom just now, told me. Now, just a minute, both of you. I didn't say that Joey didn't mind me. It's just that he's slow. He doesn't understand. I can't help that. You certainly can, son. People aren't born thieves. It takes a lot of thought, a lot of practice. But I don't like stealing. <laughs> Get him. I mean it. 
I'd rather be doing things like other kids do. How square can you get? Now, don't pick on him, Eddie. I know how the boy feels. His Uncle Ben was the same way when he was a kid. So what? So, when my mother finished with him, he turned out to be the best safe cracker this side of the Mississippi. Well, he ain't no Uncle Ben. He can be. Now that you're home again and can work right with him, he'll pick up things in no time. Maybe. Say, you must have picked up some new tricks at the reform school that you could teach him. Yeah. Then starting tomorrow, you can take your brother right under your wing. <laughs> On the outskirts of the same city at the local police pistol range, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor has accepted an invitation for an afternoon of practice. Jim, hmm? Jim Taylor. Yes? Hello there, you remember me? Oh, sure, you're Tom Gelford. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Swell. Hey, you were at the police academy last year when I was taking my refresher course. Right. When did you get into town? Several days ago. Oh, I've been temporarily assigned to our local field office here. Say, how about having dinner with me one night this week? Why, sure. Now, how's Friday night? Friday? Friday's fine. And uh, do you mind if I mix a little business with the food? <laughs> Not at all, Tom. Our police chief has just assigned me to head up our juvenile delinquency bureau. Oh, I see. I know you fellas are interested in the problem. i would call on you for some advice. Well, I'll be glad to help you with anything I can, Tom. Swell. Say, there's a target free now. Let's do a little shooting, huh? I'm out here in the kitchen, son. Well, dinner will be ready, boy. I'm starved. Yeah, we'll eat just as soon as these potatoes boil. Where's Joey? Oh, he stopped off at the candy store. Oh, did you work with him today? Yeah. How'd it go? Oh, he's coming along. Still kind of stupid, though. Eddie, you've just got to be patient with the boy. Now, what did you have him do? Well, I took him to the five and dime store. Had him lift a few things. Novelty stuff, you know. Yes? Well, he'd done that clean enough. What else? Oh, he snatched a purse right out of the dame's hand while she was parking her car. Any trouble? No, he lost himself in the crowd pretty good. Well, that sounds like he's doing fine. Why do you say he's still stupid? Well, Mom, because you can see he ain't getting no kicks. It's, it's like work to him. Oh, he'll get over that. Uh, Just wait till we get to the big city. What big city? New York. When are we going there? Tomorrow night, if we're lucky. Huh. What do we use for money? You and Joey are going to get it. Oh. I've got a job all cased out for you. Yeah? Well, what's the setup? A big house out in Brentwood. A friend of mine worked out there. She nailed the combination to the safe. She gave it to you? Yeah. The people who own the place are out of town, and there's no one there but a caretaker. <laughs> Boy, that sounds like a breeze. Well, it'll have to be a daytime job. Caretaker naps every day from two to four. That's when you and jo Joey move in. What do we need him for? Well, you'll need a lookout. Besides, he can use the experience. Oh, okay. Well, what's in the safe, do you know? Cash and jewelry. Hey, that should take us to New York real good. Oh, yes, that's what I've always lived for. Once my two boys get on the big time, I know they'll go right to the top. <laughs> Where's the safe? It's supposed to be right behind this picture. There's a catch here someplace. Find it? Yeah, yeah, here it is. Look, you stay by that door. Okay. Eddie, what is it? Did you open it yet? Of course not, stupid. These take time. Oh. Hey, what, Eddie? Give me one of them cigarettes. Where are they? On the table there. Okay, Jimmy, man. Oh, you stupid! I couldn't help it, Eddie. I caught the lamp with my elbow. Shut up. Get back by the door. Listen for that caretaker. Okay. You hear anything? No. I still better hurry with this thing. Eddie. Huh? Someone's coming downstairs. Listen. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Stay put. But we can't get behind the door and shut up. Someone here? Who's behind that door? Come out. I've got you covered. more coffee, Jim? Oh, thanks, Tom. Call me the story. Well, as I told you, wall safe was robbed and the caretaker was slugged. Mm -hmm. I questioned the caretaker just before I came over here. 
He Where said the two youngsters did the job. One about 17, the other about 14. Did he know them? No, I'd never seen them before. Well, could he give you a description of the boys? No, he couldn't. All was taken from the safe. The money and jewelry. Worth about 5000 you know. I see. Tom, is there any interstate angle? No, unfortunately, there isn't. Hmm. Did you pick up any fingerprints around the safe? No, none at all. These kids work like pros. Well, Tom, you don't seem to have much to go on. Well, I did pick up one clue. Oh, what was that? Now, this uh, clasp pin. I found it on the floor near the safe. You see, huh? Thanks. Class of 1950, huh? Yeah, that was issued at Northside High School. Well, then it's pretty safe to assume that one of the boys goes there. Yeah. Tom, what time this afternoon did that robbery occur? Approximately 3.15. And how far is Brentwood from Northside High? It's over 15 miles. Well, let's see. If school was out at 3, then the boy who did the job must have skipped school today. I've already covered that angle, Jim. I oh. contacted the principal. He's going to gather a list of all absentees in the class of 1950. Good. I'm going to check up on those boys tonight. Yeah, Mom. Are you all finished packing? Uh-huh. My bag's out in the hall. Where's Joey? In his room. He's packing, too, I guess. <laughs> I wonder if he can even do that right. Eddie, you've complained enough about him. Look, Mom, I'm only beginning. When I think of the jam he almost got us in today, we could both be in the clink right now. He couldn't help what he did. Mom, I'm not talking about knocking the lamp over. I mean when he kicked that dog. The poor boy was nervous. He had stage fright. It was his first big job. Mom, I'm telling you right now, you're wasting your time with that guy. He just ain't got no talent. Son, let's not start that again. Why do you bring him to New York? Why don't you send him to live with Aunt Mary? Oh, Ed. Why not? And have him wind up working in the bank. Your Aunt Mary is so honest, she's... Oh, that must be Mrs. Carson. She's lending me an extra suitcase. Just a minute. Oh, uh, yes? Mrs. Clinton? That's right. I'm Detective Sergeant Guilford. In my badge. Well? I'd like to talk to you a minute, please. Can I come in? Of course. Come ahead. Well, who is it, Ma? Uh, a detective. Huh? Um, what can I do for you, mister? You have a son named Joe? That's right. Is he at home? No. Where is he? Out playing. Do you know why he didn't go to school today? Why, what are you talking about? Joey went to school. Not according to the records, Mrs. Clinton. Well, I'm going out back a minute, Ma. Hey, just a minute, son. Huh? Are you Joe's brother? Yeah, that's right. Is your name Edward? Yes. I believe you just completed serving a sentence in the state reformatory. That's right. I'm afraid I'm going to have to find out where you were today, too. Look, what's this all about? There was a robbery out in Brentwood, Mrs. Clinton. Two boys were involved. Oh, goodness. One of them dropped this class pin. It's from Northside High School, class 1950. That's your son Joe's class. Well, I know that Joey didn't have anything to do with... I finished packing, Mom. Now should I... Who's this guy? He's a cop, Joey. Huh? I thought he was out playing. Uh, he uh, he must have come in the back way. I want to talk to you, son. Uh, what about? This pin. You ever see it before? Why? It was found on the floor in a house out in Brentwood that was broken into this afternoon. Two boys did the job. I, I don't know nothing about it. Where were you today? I was... I was in school. Not according to the records? Yeah, that's where I was, I tell you. You're lying, son. Look, I, I don't know anything about that robbery. Then where were you this afternoon? I was... Eddie, Mom, help me. I'm asking you, son. Leave me alone. Where were you this afternoon, Joey? Please. Answer me. Eddie, help me. Sure, kid. Oh, Eddie, my boy, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Tonight's case from the official FBI files will be reopened in just a moment. We work and save to buy the house we live in. It shelters us from the wind and the rain. Witnesses our joys and sorrows. Our home. The more home means to you, the more interested you will be in the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. It's a money saver. It's a home saver. It's America's finest plan for home ownership. Sounds like it was made to order for me. That's right. There's no plan for homeowners like it. Just listen to these four advantages. First, 
During the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan, ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Second, as your mortgage shrinks, the cash fund increases. You can use it to pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in approximately 14 years. Third, mortgage interest is only 4%, and there is a liberal allowance to help cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. Fourth, if the owner dies, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. You mean my wife would inherit our home? Yes, she would. Free and clear? Yes, she would. And interest charges stop the day of death. All in all, a man is mighty lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home qualify him for an equitable assured home ownership plan. Well, how can I find out if I qualify, Mr. Keating? Ask your Equitable Society representative. Get full information on the plan that protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. Look in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, The Reluctant Thief. There may be those of you who are listening to this program who doubt that any mother ever existed like the one in tonight's case in the files of your FBI. In a book entitled The Story of the FBI, recently published by E.P. Dutton, you will find in text and pictures the true story of a mother who went even further. A mother named Ma Barker who taught her four children the gentle art of murder. Or maybe you're thinking that this case doesn't apply to you because you're not teaching your children to cheat and lie and steal. But it does apply to you because the road to juvenile delinquency is paved with the neglect of parents. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Taylor, returning to his desk, finds a visitor waiting for him. Jim Taylor? Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm Dick Rutland, Lieutenant of Detectives over at headquarters. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. I've heard of you. I'm glad to know you. Oh, yeah. Well, I hope you haven't been waiting long. No, no, I just got here just a few minutes ago. Fine. Well, what can I do for you? Well, this isn't a very happy mission I'm on. Oh? I've come here to tell you about Tom Guilford. Why? What's wrong? He was shot what? and seriously wounded last night. What? We didn't find him until this morning. He'd been driven across the bridge and dumped out on the other side of the river. How is he now? The doctors say he's off the danger list. Oh, good. What about visitors? He wants to see you. In fact, he sent me over here to get you. Where is he, Lieutenant? Memorial Hospital. Let's get right over there. Hello, Tom. Uh, hello, Jim. Uh, just take it easy, boy. Keep your head down. Okay. I hear you're doing fine. Sure, I'm okay. Swell. Uh, sit down, Jim. Okay, thanks. Did they uh, tell you what happened? Uh, look, I think I have this story. You just let me repeat it to you, huh? Right. Now, you went to see a family named Clinton. Mother and two sons. One son just out of the reform school. The other goes to Northside High. That's right. As you were questioning them, the older boy pulled a gun and shot you. Uh-huh. Then they put you in the back seat of your own car, drove across the river, and when they hit an isolated stretch of road, they dumped you up. Right. Then they obviously... Wait, Jim. Hmm? What's the matter? Crossing the river took me into another state. Over the state line brings the FBI in. That's right. They kind of got you into this the hard way, huh? <laughs> yes, I should say you did. Well, to review the rest of it. An alarm has already been sent out on your car, Tom. So far, there's nothing on that. The Clinton house was searched, but no clue was found as to where they were going. Oh, one thing, Jim. Yes? Someplace along the way, I must have come to... Oh. I'm sure I heard one of them say something about going to New York. Well, the New York police have already been alerted to watch out for the Clintons and your car. Good. New York field office have been notified, too, so something should turn up from one of those sources. I hope so. Now, look, Tom, there's only one thing for you to worry about now. That's getting better. So now close your eyes and get some sleep. Yes. How'd you make up? Fine. Did you see the fence? Yes, he was a very nice man, an old friend of your Uncle Ben. Well, what did he give you for the jewelry? $1,800. Is that all? 
Son, when you do business with the fence, especially one here in New York, you take what he offers you. Where's Joey? In the bedroom, getting dressed. Look, Mom, when are you going to have a talk with that guy? Oh, now's as good a time as any. Call him in here. Okay. Joey. Yeah? Come in here. Ma wants you. Okay. What is it, Mom? I want to have a talk with you, son. Well? Sit down. Okay. Joey, you've done several things now that have gotten us into a great deal of trouble. You were forcing Eddie to shoot that cop could have finished all of us. Yeah, I, I know. Fortunately, we got away with it. But we can't afford to have you make any more mistakes. Now, if I give you one more chance, will you promise to behave yourself? Okay, Mom. Oh, that's my good boy. I'm let you. Oh, now, let's see. I left a grocery list here someplace. It's right on the table there, Mom. Oh, here. Take this list, Joey. Here's some money. I want you to go to the store. Okay. Hey, stupid. Why? Let's see if you can handle something legitimate without getting into trouble. Special Agent Taylor. Hello, Jim. This is Dick Rutland. Oh, yes, Dick. I just left Tom Guilford. He's feeling much better. Oh, swell. I've just got some news that should make him really feel better. What's that? I got a call about an hour ago from our New York office. They've located Guilford's car. Really? Yes, it was found abandoned on the Lower East Side. I see. And just a few minutes ago, the New York police called. Yes? They picked up a boy. When they questioned him, he... 40 minutes. Can you meet me at the station? Sure, Jim. Good. I'll see you at the ticket window. Boy's right in this room here, Lieutenant. Oh, fine. Go ahead. Thanks. Hello, Joey. Hello. I'm a special agent of the FBI. FBI? That's right. And this is Lieutenant Rutland. He's from your hometown. Oh. Joey, we've come here to find out where your mother and brother are. I... I can't tell you. Look, son, your brother is wanted on a very serious charge. He shot a policeman. <laughs> Now, you'd better tell us where we can find it. I... I can't. I can't on it. Why not? I... I promise not to mess him up anymore. Please. Please don't make me tell. Look, son. We know they're somewhere in this neighborhood. We will find them eventually ourselves. Now, why don't you help us and save us that trouble? Look. Look, you can talk to me forever. I'm... I'm not squealing. Jim, this is the same routine he's been giving the New York police ever since they picked him up. Yes, I know. Joey... Do you know anything about the law? Why? You were present when that policeman was shot. He'd come to your house to pick you up. That makes you an accessory to the shooting. Do you know what that means, son? No. It means you can be sent away for a long term if we never find your mother and brother. Do you realize that? I... I don't care. I still ain't gonna talk. But son, you'd better listen Wait to what minute, I... Wait a minute, Huh? Joey, is this your jacket? Yes, sir. We don't have to question him anymore, Dick. I know where they can be found. Eddie. Huh? Oh, what time is it? Ten after six. Oh, what could have happened to him? He left here over four hours ago. I know, I know. Do you think he could have gotten lost? No. He's missing. There's only one reason for it. He's in trouble again. Oh, dear. Now look, Mom, if he's in trouble, he's most likely been picked up. Do you think so? Sure, if he's picked up, he's going to talk. Oh, no. Mom, he's bound to. If he talks, we better not stay here much longer. He wouldn't squeal on his own mother and brother. He's stupid enough to do anything. Wait. Huh? It might be the cops. Well, it could also be Joey. I'm going to find out. Who is it? It's, it's me, Mom. Joey. Oh, thank heaven. Where have you been? I... I got picked up. By the cops? Yeah. What for? I... I tried to steal some groceries. <gasps> you what? Mom, I thought you'd be proud of me. How'd you get away from them? I didn't get away. What? Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh, you little stool pigeon. You tipped them off where we were. No, I didn't. Your mother tipped us off. I... Uh, what do you mean? I found this grocery list in his jacket, Mrs. Clinton. You wrote it on the back of the stationery of this apartment hotel. Oh. All right, now come along, all of you. They 
Clinton family were turned over to the local authorities. Young Joey was sentenced to a reformatory. His brother Eddie's parole was revoked and he was sentenced to 10 years in a state prison. The mother was prosecuted as an accessory and aider and abettor to theft and was sent to prison for 15 years. In connection with tonight's case from the files of your FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, has this to say to you listeners. I quote, Juvenile delinquency is the number one problem of not only your FBI, but of every law enforcement agency in the country. Children constitute one-fourth of the population of our nation and 100% of the future of the country. For that reason alone, we dare not allow another day to go by without interesting ourselves in the problem of how to help the children of America. That is a problem that concerns you because the solution to it lies in your own hometown. There are civic groups in your community who are trying to combat the evil. Join them and fight with them. They need your help because it is important that the children of the country know that the adult population is not composed of their enemies, but of their friends. This is the time to prove to your own conscience that you are indeed your brother's keeper. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. What you said about the assured home ownership plan impressed me a lot, Mr. Keating. I'm going to find out if I can qualify. I certainly hope you can, Ted, because look what you get in one package from the Equitable Society. A mortgage that's paid in full if the owner dies. If not, a cash fund to be used in financial emergencies. And mortgage interest at only 4%. No wonder it's called America's finest plan for home ownership. So don't delay. See your Equitable representative soon. Or write to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Frustrated Mice. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Frustrated Mice on This Is Your FBI. Now stay tuned for Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying quiz show. Match your knowledge against contestants trying for $1,000 or more. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.